Thanks. Welcome, everyone, to a meeting of the Boston Region Metropolitan Planning Organization. I'm David Moeller. I represent Secretary Monica Tibbet Nut, Tibbet's Nut here. You are invited to participate in our transportation planning process, regardless of your race, color, national origin, including, including limited English proficiency, religion, creed, gender, ancestry, ethnicity, disability, age, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity or expression, veteran status or background. Read the full notice of your rights and protections at www.bostonmpo.org slash mpo underscore non underscore d-i-s-c-r-i-m-i-n-a-t-i-o-n. <clears throat> this meeting is accessible to people with disabilities. Zoom products are compliant with exceptions with the following standards. Web Content Accessibility Guidelines 2.1 Level AA Standards and Revised Section 508 Standards. If you require any additional accommodations in order to participate fully in this meeting, or if you have any technical difficulties, please contact Adriana Jacobson of the MPO staff at ajacobsen at ctps.org or 857-702-3663 or via the chat box. <clears throat> All participants will join the meeting with muted microphones. Please rename yourself to include your first name, last name, and affiliation. After roll call, board members may mute and unmute themselves. Always remain muted unless actively speaking. To participate in the discussion, please select the raise hand function. Find this by clicking either on the participants button at the bottom of the screen, and a window will pop up with a raise hand button at the bottom, or the reactions button in the toolbar. The chair will then call on participants. If you're on the phone, you can use star nine to raise your hand. <coughs> Excuse me. First item on the agenda is the introductions. Dave, please call the roll. Thank you. Uh, we'll begin with Mastock seat one. This is David Moeller. Mass dot C2. Uh, good morning, John Bashad, representing Highway Administrator Jonathan Gulliver, present. Thank you. Mass dot Highway Division. Mass dot Highway, John Romano, here. Yeah. Thank you. MBTA. Good morning. This is Laura Gilmore, representing General Manager Philip Eng and the MBTA. Thank you. Next is Massport. Good morning. This is Sarah Lee. Good morning. Uh, next, MAPC. Good morning, uh, Eric Barassa with the Metropolitan Area Planning Council. Thank you. MBTA Advisory Board. Good morning. Hannah Switlikowski, MBTA Advisory Board. Good morning. Uh, next, Advisory Council. Leonard Thiggins, Advisory Council here. And for the last third of the meeting, I may be phasing in and out, okay? Thank you. Roger that. Uh, City of Boston, seat one. Hey everyone, this is Jen Rowe representing Mayor Michelle Wu in the City of Boston. Hello. Uh, City of Boston, seat two. Good morning, this is Matt Moran representing Mayor Wu in the City of Boston. Morning. At large city, city of Everett, next. Good morning, this is Eric Molinari representing Carlo Di Maria and the city of Everett. Thank you for joining Eric. At large city, city of Newton. Good morning, David Kozis representing Mayor Ruth Ann Fuller and the city of Newton. Good morning. Do we have at large town, town of Arlington? Good morning, this is John Alessi representing Select Board Chair Steve DeCourcy in the Town of Arlington. Hello, at large town, Town of Brookline. Morning, Erin Chute, Commissioner of Public Works representing Select Board Chair Bernard Green, the Town of Brookline. Morning, next is Intercore Committee, City of Somerville. Good morning, uh, Tom Bent, City of Somerville representing Mayor Katiana Ballantyne in the Intercore. Good morning. Next, Minuteman Advisory Group on Interlocal Coordination, Town of Acton. Good morning, Kristen Guichard, representing oh. Acton Select Board Member Fran Arsenal for the Magic Sub Region. Good morning, Metro West Regional Collaborative, City of Framingham, please. 
Dennis Giambetti, uh, representing Metro West and Mayo Siski. Thank you. North Shore Task Force, City of Beverly. Hi, Darlene Wynn, representing Mayor Michael Cahill and the North Shore Task Force. Hello, North Suburban Planning Council, Town of Burlington. Next is uh, South Shore Coalition, Town of Hall. Uh, good morning, Chris Diorio, representing uh, Select Board Chair Erwin Nessoff. Good morning. Southwest Advisory Planning Committee, Town of Rentham. Next, do we have uh, Three Rivers Interlocal Council, Town of Norwood? Uh, good morning, Tom O'Rourke from the Town of Norwood, representing the uh, Trick Sub Region. Good morning. Um, our federal uh, partners, the Federal Highway Administration. Yes, good morning, Ken Miller. Thank you, Ken. Do we have the Federal Transit Administration today as well? With that, I call the roll. Back to you, Mr. Chair, and thank you. Thank you, David. Next item on the agenda is the Chair's report. I do not have one, so we'll go directly to Tegan with the Executive Director's report. Many thanks, David. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Tegan Tyke. I'm the Executive Director of the Boston Region MPO. And if you can go to the next slide, I'll have a relatively um, brief update today um, in my in my report. But I did want to first start with another staffing update um, that is bittersweet. I wanted to announce that Judy Day will be leaving the MPO on November 4th, and she'll be taking on the role of a conservation administrator for the town of Hopkinton. And since she joined us over two years ago, she really led the development of our climate resilience program and managed our air quality and conformance um, determination support programs. She's also really championed integrating resilience considerations into really everything that we do at the organization. And we've really valued her passion for that. Um, so we're gonna miss her. Um, we absolutely miss her, sorry, wish her the best of success in her new role and will um, work to replace um, that role um, in the very near future. But please, if you've worked with Judy, um, say, you know, give her your congratulations. And if you haven't yet, you've been missing out, um, feel free to reach out and wish her well in her new role. Um, as a reminder related to that, we have posted a number of jobs recently, and we would love for all of you to help support us in seeking the applicants that we need to fill these. Um, we have posted the two manager positions, um, as well as the planner position related to managing the UPWP, which I mentioned last week or last meeting. And those manager positions are for the multimodal planning and design group, as well as the planning and policy groups. So again, please help us spread the word. Um, please take a look at our careers page, and we appreciate your support. Next slide. Um, so all I really have in the in sort of engagement updates is, I, and I don't want to steal Len's thunder here, but I know Len will report out on the advisory council soon, but I wanted to emphasize that the next meeting for the Regional Transportation Advisory Council that will be on November 13th, which is the day before the annual meeting, will be the last one for this um, council's current structure and membership, while staff then work to restructure the group in the following months. So um, that will actually be a hybrid meeting. Um, with an in-person component at our office. And so I just wanted to give you a heartfelt um, um, a suggestion to, to consider attending and or reach out to members of the advisory council that you know. Um, certainly the 13th will be a celebratory day to, to really talk about the expertise and investments that those members have given the council over the last number of years. Um, next slide, please. Next slide, yeah, there it is. Um, all right, so for today's agenda, we have a number of distinct items, including a lot of action items. Um, we will have, first of all, a discussion about um, the TIP Amendment 2, which was the one that was deferred from the last meeting um, for a little bit more um, uh, thinking and conversation due to the request to waive the public comment period, and that's primarily related to the Alston Multimodal Project, um, introducing early action grant funding um, for that project. So Ethan will explain more later. He will also talk to you about a new TIP Amendment 3, which also programs a number of federal grants. And then we will have a few other action, action items, one related to approving the operations plan update, and then also some work scopes related to discrete studies that we are carrying out with planning funds. 
Um, then there will be three different kind of, um, I don't know, governance type topics. So first there'll be a brief update likely from Eric Barasa um, about the nominations process or the elections process. And then we'll discuss vice chair nominations, which will be voted on at the annual meeting. And also committee members will talk a bit about the activities of the committee and invite um, folks to join those committees. Next slide, please. And then that's really it. Um, we'll have the annual meeting on November 14th. And um, we are looking forward, we've been hearing RSVPs from folks about um, elected officials and others who may attend. Please keep those RSVPs coming and let us know if you have any questions about what's coming up on the agenda um, or anything else to help support you attending that meeting. And that's the end of my report, Mr. Chair, if anyone has any questions. Thank you. Questions or comments, Lynn? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, <laughs> um, Tegan, I, mean, I was actually counting on you and or Stella you know, to give an update on what's gonna happen I mean, with respect to that advisory council meeting. So by no means are you stealing my thunder meeting. So I invite, you, I invite you <laughs> now or or when we come to the, the advisory council part, be to feel free to say um, anything more that you feel needs to be said about the meeting on the 13th. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Lynn. Any other questions or comments at this time? Seeing none, thank you, Tegan. Thanks. Next item on the agenda is public comments. Is there anyone from the public who would like to comment at this time? If so, please raise your hand. And I see Andy Raker. Yes. Did I correctly? Yes, uh, close enough. Um, so good morning. Um, uh, my name is Andy Reeker. I'm the Transit Program Manager at the City of Cambridge Community Development Department. I um, uh, appreciate the opportunity to make co public comment at the beginning of the agenda today. I'm making a short comment on TIP Amendment 3, which I believe is going out to public comment after this meeting. So, of course, we'll be following up with some written comments. Um, in there uh, is listed the MBTA's Draw 1 project. The City understands the importance of this project. And we have actually received some briefings from MBTA staff about the railroad portions of the of this program. We're really um, happy to see that the MBTA has been able to get federal funding for that project. Um, however, we remain concerned about the status of the pedestrian and bicycle connection that has been a longstanding mitigation commitment from the Central Artery Tunnel Project. Um, we're specifically concerned in um, kind of our briefings. It appears that there's no lead agency on the design and construction of the upstream pedestrian bike connection. And we hope that the MBTA or other state agencies can continue the conversation about this important regional pedestrian and bike connection um, as the uh, upcoming months uh, allow. Um, that's my brief comment. Um, I'm planning to attend and see what the actual you know, specifics are in terms of uh, you know, the public comment period. And I uh, appreciate the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Eaker. Other questions or comments? Seeing none at this time, if you have a comment during the meeting, please raise your hand and we will try to call on you. Next item on the agenda is committee chair's reports. Are there any? Derek Cravat. Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to let everyone know that the Unified Planning Work Program Committee will be meeting next on November 7th at 1 p.m. I sent around an email to committee members yesterday, uh, but just wanted to mention here uh, in case others are interested in attending. Um, our main item will be the first amendment to the fiscal year 2025 UPWP, uh, mostly involving uh, the inclusion of uh, discretionary uh, planning grant awards uh, in the region um, that are required to be amended on. So um, just wanted to make a plug for that November 7th at 1 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. Any questions for Derek? Seeing none, are there any other committee chairs reports at this time? Jen Rowe. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm happy to report that the TIP Process Engagement and Readiness Committee, otherwise known as TIPPER, met last Thursday, October 17th, uh, to kick off the development of the Federal Fiscal Year's 2026-230 uh, TIP development process. Uh, Ethan previewed the anticipated schedule for TIP development, highlighting some important dates and milestones. Um, he will be emailing that presentation to all board members, so we have uh, all have a awareness of um, what to expect in the coming months. Uh, additionally, Ethan walked us through some of the challenging trends that we encountered in previous development cycles and paired that with a discussion of the interventions we're using to try to address them. 
uh, those challenges are like the decline in application volumes uh, for the TIPS core investment programs, though we are thankfully seeing maybe some signs of stabilization there. Um, and we've also seen the um, pattern of cost increases and delays that lead to surpluses in uh, early fiscal years and constrained funding in later fiscal years. Uh, while uh, we set expectations around the likelihood that these challenges will you know, continue, you will persist, it won't be fully resolved in this cycle, we are taking some steps to get ahead of them as much as possible. Um, and some of the interventions we talked about were the project design pilot, quarterly updates for the MPO board on project readiness, municipal pre-readiness days, and then a proactive solicitation for transit fill-in projects. Um, so finally, with all that context in mind, we did uh, spend some time collectively imagining what we would make us feel like we'd had a successful tip development in June, and I'll put a link in the chat to a board um, with uh, kind of the results of those that exercise. And Finally, I'll say if any of this sounds interesting to you, I'd invite you to join us at our next scheduled Tipper committee meeting. It's December 19th at 1 p.m. following the MPO meeting on that day, and also to consider serving on the committee. Um, there'll be more information about the committee structure later in this meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jen. Any questions for Jen? Seeing none, are there any other committee chairs reports at this time? Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the RTAC report. Lynn. Uh, thank you again, Mr. Chair. And so, as I mentioned, being, uh, uh, I uh, staff is leading, leading the charge being on the planning for this committee. So, or, or, I'm sorry, for the last meeting. We, so, if Tegan or Stella have anything they want to add, um, I welcome that now. Otherwise, I have no report. Thank you, Lynn. Anything else from the MPO staff on this? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if Stella is actually available right now on the meeting, and I don't want to put her on the spot. But we'll be happy to share some details, some additional details about what's being planned um, with our tech members and also others before we actually get to that meeting. So we'll definitely do that. Just want to make sure that date is in folks' calendars right now. So remind us again, one of you, about the date. It's uh, <laughs> November thirteenth. There you 13th. go. Two thirty p.m. the regular time, and and yeah, we just wanted to um, extend the invitation to come um, celebrate with us for all of the folks on this call. We'd love to see you there. Thank you, Stella. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Tegan. Any questions from the members? Seeing none, next item on our agenda is the approval of the minutes of August 15th. Can I get a motion and a second to approve the minutes? And please state your name for the record when making the motion. Eric Barassa. Uh, Eric Barrasso, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of August 15th. Thank you. Jane Rowe. I'd like to second that motion. Thank you. Motion has been made and seconded. Are there any comments, changes, questions, or suggestions? Seeing none, please call the roll. Happy to, starting with David Moeller. Yes. John Bouchard. John Bouchard, yes. John Romano. John Romano, yes. Laura Gilmore. Laura Gilmore, yes. Dara Lee. Dara Lee, yes. Eric Barasa. Eric Barasa, yes. Hannah Swilikowski. Hannah Swilikowski, yes. Len Diggins. Diggins, yes. Jen Rowe. Jen Rowe, yes. Matt Moran. Matt Moran, yes. Eric Molinari. Eric Molinari, yes. David Cozes. David Cozes, yes. Don Alessi. Don Alessi, yes. Aaron Shute. Aaron Shute, yes. Tom Bent. Tom Bent, yes. Kristen Guichard. Kristen Guichard, yes. Dennis Giambetti. Dennis Giambetti, yes. Darlene Wynn. Darlene Wynn, yes. Christy Orio. Christy Orio, yes. Tom O'Rourke. Tom O'Rourke, yes. Is there anyone um, on the roll call that has missed? 
that motion carries. Uh, back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Dave. Next item on the agenda is the item tabled from last meeting. Amendment number two, Ethan LaPointe. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good morning, everybody. My name is Ethan LaPointe. I'm the Transportation Improvement Program Manager with the Boston Region MPO. Uh, this first action I'm here today for the TIP is Amendment 2 to the Federal Fiscal Years 2025-29 to Transportation Improvement Program. If we can please move on to the next slide. As was noted previously, if we can go on to the next one as well, please provide a summary of this amendment. There is a single item proposed here. This item was initially presented for consideration at the previous October 10th meeting of the MPO board, where the MPO board had voted to table discussion on the amendment and a vote for it till this meeting on October 24th. Amendment two includes again one light item and it programs a portion of a federal fiscal year 2023 reconnecting communities and neighborhoods grant for very early action items on the Interstate 90 Alston multimodal project specifically Cambridge Street Bridge sections of that project. The overall grant award is for $335.3 million, of which as part of this amendment, $10.3 million is proposed for programming within the federal fiscal year's 2025 earmark discretionary program. While also not part of the action on this amendment, specifically the grant portion, the overall budget for the project on the MassDOT owned section, the highway section of the portion of the project has increased Namely, as part of the previous presentation of this item on October 10th, the table that was posted indicated a budget of $1.9 billion, and the table that is now available for consideration for this amendment here today indicates the revised cost estimate of $2.07 billion. If we can go on to the next slide that's indicated in further detail, showing the project for the replacement of the Alston Interstate 90 Elevated Viaduct, and interchange reconstruction, Beacon Park Yard layover, and West Station. Again, this is new funding only for a portion of the discretionary grant award through Reconnecting Communities in the amount of $10.3 million. With the project description on the right, also now indicating that revised overall budget estimate for the highway portion. If we can go on to the next slide, as was initially presented, if we can go on to the next, please. At the October 10th MPO board meeting, there is a request to waive public comment for this amendment to program the grant for the step action. Uh, MassDOT is also available to provide a further explanation should members have any questions there. And I'm happy to field any questions. Thank you, Ethan. Any questions from the members? Seeing none. Can Oh, I'm sorry, General. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just wanted to uh, ask, I know we had discussed at the previous meeting, um, the possibility of having a presentation before the board about uh, this obviously very uh, regionally significant project. And I just was curious if um, there was an update on that. Yeah, so we have not yet scheduled it. Um, actually, I'd like to hear from the board. So we, we will not have it at the November meeting because that's our annual meeting. And I don't think we're having a second meeting in November. So if the board members would like us to come in December, we will certainly come in December. But if we want to miss the holidays and come in January, we'll come in January. It, it, Eric and I are set, we'll set the agenda and we are happy to come at the board's request whenever you're ready. I, I, you know, I, don't, I didn't want to say January because that looks like we're trying to delay, but I also don't want to like put something in December when the public who might really be interested might say, well, why are you doing this during the holidays? So <laughs> happy if anybody has a concept, but we are happy to do it either time and we're not we would like to not delay it too far because we have made this commitment mr chair Thank if you. i may just clarify yeah i'm i'm sorry i think I, I misled folks in an earlier comment i made there is a second meeting in november oh. it just slipped my mind when i was talking about it earlier because it is the following week after the annual meeting so it is one week later so it's a very tight turnaround so i, I apologize for that but there is a november oh. one that was my my omission Right. Eric. Um, thank you, David. Um, I know there are, I know there's a lot of work happening with this project. It's a very massive, you know, complex project. So um, I think um, my perspective would be, yeah, it would be great to have a presentation either end of November or December or even early January, whatever. I think um, when folks feel like, you know, 
it's a pro like I know there's a lot of work going on. So if if there will be more and better information in early January, I think that's fine versus if there's less, um, you know, if there's still, you know, still issues that are not, you know, that this, that, that are still being worked on that can't really be discussed in, in November. I would, I would rec I would be in favor of waiting a little while if there's more information, but if the project team says no, you know, it's still going to be a while before some of these issues, you know, are, are resolved and whenever it's appropriate. Thank you, Eric. Uh, before I call on Lynn, on that, I think, and again, every time I say this, I may, I may, I may have been, end up being wrong, but I think there may be some benefit to not doing it in November and that some decisions might be made before the end of the year. Um, that being said, we're, we are ready whenever. Lynn? Just a suggestion, I mean, an alternative idea. I mean, uh, I mean you, if you have the presentation, if you all have all the information and you can uh, make the presentation I mean, or create the presentation, I mean, let's say in December, uh, you could just release it I mean, to us at that point and then have the discussion at a later meeting. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Any other comments around this issue? So anyone who has a preference or or a preference for a particular time or against a particular time, please email Tegan because Eric and I and Tegan and Dave and, and the rest of the team, we meet on, I think, a bi-weekly basis. We meet frequently to talk about agenda setting. So get some emails into to Tegan and Dave and Eric and I will take that into consideration as we set the agenda. But we are we are committed to doing a presentation no later than January. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, can I get a motion and a second to waive the public comment period and adopt this amendment today? Eric Barassa. Uh, Eric Barassa, MAPC. I will make a motion to um, waive the public comment period and adopt as presented today. Thank you. Matt Moran. I'll second that, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Motion have been made and seconded. Please call the roll. David Moeller. Yes. John Bouchard. John Bouchard, yes. Don Romano. Don Romano, yes. Laura Gilmore. Laura Gilmore, yes. Sarah Lee. Sarah Lee, yes. Eric Barasa. Eric Barasa, yes. Hannah Switlikowski. Hannah Switlikowski, yes. Len Diggins. Diggins, yes. Jen Rowe. Jen Rowe, yes. Matt Moran. Matt Moran, yes. Eric Molinari. Eric Molinari, yes. David Kozis. David Kozis, yes. John Alessi. John Alessi, yes. Aaron Shute. Uh, I will return. Uh, Tom Bent. Tom Bent, yes. Kristen Guichard. Kristen Guichard, yes. Dennis Giambetti. Dennis Giambetti, yes. Darlene Wynn. Darlene Wynn, yes. Christy Ario. Christy Ario, yes. <clears throat> Tom O'Rourke. Tom O'Rourke, yes. I have to circle back uh, to Aaron Shute. Otherwise, is there anyone else uh, that would like to be acknowledged for this vote? That motion carries. Uh, back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Dave, and thank you, everyone. I appreciate all your questions and suggestions. Next item on the agenda is Amendment Number Three, Ethan Lapointe. All right. Thank you very much. Moving on to the next amendment item for the federal fiscal year 2025 to 29 tip. This is Amendment 3 to be considered for a release for public comment period at the end of this presentation. If we can go on to the next slide, there are quite a few changes proposed within Amendment 3, though they all fall within the federal fiscal years 2025 earmark discretionary program and the 2025 and 26 transit programs. All items that are included in this amendment relate to federal discretionary grant awards, specifically the programming of 17 new federal discretionary grant awards 
and for previously programmed discretionary grants, namely grants that appeared in the federal fiscal years 2024 to 28 tip in federal fiscal year 2024, but were not contracted out during federal fiscal year 2024 and are thus reappearing here. I'll also mention that this uh, amendment includes not only design and construction grants, but also based on recent guidance from the Federal Highway Administration Massachusetts Division, also planning grant awards for the TIP amendment. There may be a future action in the Unified Planning Work Program or UPWP that will also incorporate some of these planning grant awards as well. If we can go on to the next slide uh, and on to the next one, please, to start working through some of these uh, grants here. There are a series of some new uh, and also returning Safe Streets and Roads for All grants, moving alphabetically through municipal awardees here. The a new traffic signal operation project for the federal fiscal year 2023 Safe Streets and Roads for All implementation grant for the city of Boston with the grant award in the amount of $14.4 million matched with $3.6 million of funding for an overall budget of $18 million. Safety at nine key intersections also for the city of Boston. This one coming from a federal fiscal year 2022 Safe Streets and Roads for All award. This one also previously being programmed in the 2024 to 28 tip. I should note that only a portion of this grant was actually obligated during uh, the federal fiscal year 2024 period. So while there was a $9 million award overall, this amendment only programs $8.012 million of that remaining grant award with the associated uh, match as well. There's also a Reconnecting Communities and Neighborhoods Award for the city of Boston for reconnecting Chinatown with a $1.8 million award and $600,000 of match there as well. Moving on to the next slide, still with the city of Boston here, is a joint application or effort from the cities of Boston and Chelsea for the greening of the Chelsea Creek waterfront. This is a recently awarded Neighborhood Access and Equity Program grant in the amount of $2.5 million with their associated match under a regional partnership program. Uh, moving on, or I should say on the next project, this is actually for the Boston Region MPO entity uh, for the Safe Streets and Roads for All Supplemental Planning and Demonstration Grant for the MPO that was recently awarded with the grant amount in the amount of $7.5 million of federal funding through the federal fiscal years 2024 Safe Streets and Roads for All program and associated match to uh, conduct demonstration work through the MPO's Vision Zero Action Plan efforts. There's also an award for the city of Everett for planning and demonstration activities from the federal fiscal year 2023 SS4A grant program with $90,720 of federal funding awarded. And more recently, an award for the city of Everett through the Reconnecting Communities program for uniting neighborhoods and transit opportunities throughout the city in the amount of $1.2 million of award with matching funds. On the next slide, is another uh, Neighborhood Access and Equity Program grant award. This one for the City of Lynn for Riverworks Reimagined in the amount of $2.5 million. And for the Town of Norwood, a $240,000 grant award with $60,000 of match to update four electric vehicle charging ports. Uh, this one being awarded through the Electric Vehicle Charger Reliability and Accessibility Accelerator, EVCRAA, uh, grant program. There's also the programming of a federal fiscal year's 2024 raise grant award for the city of Salem uh, to conduct planning, engineering, and design activities for the South Salem commuter rail stop project as proposed for inclusion here. And on the next slide, two grant awards for the city of Somerville. The first programming a federal fiscal year 2022 safe streets and roads for all demonstration grant award and also a federal fiscal year 2023 Safe Streets and Roads for All Supplemental and Demonstration Grant Award with the first program for $116,800 of award with match and at the next with $3.98 million of awarded funding with match as well. Both of these looking at quick build treatments on various streets throughout the city of Somerville, the first on Broadway and the others to be determined by the city of Somerville. We can go on the next slide. We then have on, on the next one, some of the federal discretionary grant awards that are being uh, programmed within the MBTA's transit program section of the TIP. This being for a returning project uh, through the, I should say the areas of persistent poverty grant. This slide is actually incorrect on the new budget. Uh, the estimated budget for this grant award for the Ashmont Station battery electric charger bus design 
is uh, $127,367 of grant award with $31,842, a much lower budget than the one listed here on screen. Uh, that said, inversely, the lower Broadway Everett Corridor grant award here is for a $22,400,000 grant award through the federal fiscal year 2024 raise grant with $5,600,000 of matching funds to support the deployment of uh, transit priority infrastructure on Lower Broadway. Similarly, the new budget line item listed here is incorrect. The item that is listed in the table for this amendment is correct, however, at about uh, $28 million of overall project budget there between the award and matching funds. If we can go on to the next slide, we then have the All Stations Accessibility Grant Program Award from Federal Fiscal Year 2024 for the MBTA on the Green Line B and C branch accessibility efforts. This is for 14 stops on the Green Line light rail for B and C branches, with the award amount being for $67,609,672 with associated match for an overall budget to be programmed in this amendment of $84,512,090. Moving on the next slide, there is also a Safe Streets and Roads for All award for the MBTA from the Federal Fiscal Year 2024 program in the amount of $2.155 million with associated match for their mobile eye shield and bus collision avoidance demonstration project. There's also another recent new award here for the MBTA and City of Quincy for the, uh, the Quincy Squantum Pier Modernization Effort through the Federal Fiscal Year 2024 Federal Transit Administration Passenger Ferry Grant Program Project to install a new pier, float, and ramp system at the Quincy Pier. There's also another grant award for the AT in the form of the MBTA Battery Electric Bus Purchase Project, which awards $40 million of funding, which has an 85-15 match, and additional activities are also included within this project for workforce development efforts. The overall budget for this project being programmed in this amendment is $47,205,882. For the next project, this is actually a project for the Metro West Regional Transit Authority, if we can go on to the next slide, please, which is the, a returning project for the Blandon Energy and Sustainable Storage Technology Project awarded through a federal fiscal year's 2022 SMART grant or Strengthening Mobility and Revolutionizing Transportation grant to install solar power and battery electric uh, battery banks for on-site electric energy production for future efforts for the MWRTA fleet and also development of a SMART grid. But then for the uh, last MBTA project listed in this amendment, uh, there is the North Station Draw 1 Bridge Replacement Project awarded through federal fiscal year 2024 National Infrastructure Project Assistance, or NEPA program, also sometimes referred to as the MEGA program. This project is being programmed across two years as part of this amendment, with a portion in federal fiscal year 2025 and the other in 2026. Uh, the overall amount of funding being programmed between these two years is $472,300,616 of federal funding and $117,075,154 of match, for federal fiscal years 2025, that comes out to about $354 million. If we can go on to the next slide, for federal fiscal year 2026, that is $236,330,000. So again, that one grant award is being proposed for programming across two years here. We can go on to the next slide. MPO staff are requesting that, or on the next slide as well, please. MPO staff are requesting that the board votes to release Amendment 3 for a full 21-day public comment period, which would commence this coming Monday, October 28th, and conclude on November 18th at 5 p.m. I'm happy to field any questions. Thank you, Ethan. Eric Barassa. Uh, th yeah, thank you, Ethan. Um, so, Ethan, th these are all recent federal discretionary grants, correct? A large number of the items listed in this amendment are recently awarded grants. However, uh, there's also a significant number that were awarded as part of a war in the federal fiscal year 22 and 23 rounds, may have been programmed in the federal fiscal years 24, 24 and 28 TIP, but were not contracted or obligated in that year, and thus are here to be reprogrammed in this TIP. Okay. For 2025. Well, Similar to first, your I first want to say, I mean, this is, um, I think this is, really incredible um the amount of discretionary grants that the region you know has been been able to secure um you know 
funding you know applications that MassDOT has gone after, tremendous ones from the MBTA, from, from numerous cities and towns, the, the MPO. I, I just think this is a real testament to the work that everyone's doing. And I, I just like to say, this is this is great. This is a really, you know, take a moment to celebrate um, all these, you know, funds coming into the region and the great work that that everyone is doing, um, which we rarely do. <laughs> um, so that's one thing I'd like to say. Two, um, I'm wondering, Laura Gilmore at the at the MBTA, could you speak to what Andy Reeker was was talking about in in his public comment? Are you able to to speak to that? Sure, I can at least a little, and I think this may have been discussed in some previous um, MPO meetings as well. Um, I, I know that uh, members of our team, uh, not including myself, did meet with the city of Cambridge, I think earlier this week and had a productive conversation about um, that their concerns on this project. Um, you know, I do want to say that, you know, our draw one project is, you know, to your point, Eric, a, a really uh, great example of the sorts of federal funding that has been coming into the region. Um, this is the largest federal award the MBTA has ever won. Um, and, you know, uh, significantly larger than even the, the amount of funding that we won during the last fiscal year, which I think was about $130 million in federal funding. Um, but this is for a really critical project, the North Station Draw Replacement. Um, and my understanding is that, you know, the pedestrian bridge element that the city of Cambridge spoke to um, was it is not included in this grant project for a number of reasons, one of which uh, is that uh, through our environmental review process, we identified that the bridge requires um, separate permits from the Coast Guard that were not able to be moved on the same schedule. So uh, given the importance of moving the, uh, the rail elements forward, uh, given the condition of that bridge, which if anyone is not aware, supports the entire north side of our commuter rail system, um, you know, we're, we're trying to move that forward, but, you know, continuing conversations um, with DCR and Cambridge and others about that element. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Lynn? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I agree with Eric. I mean, it's quite the um, selection of projects, I mean, uh, or array of projects, I mean, and, uh, I, I am curious about how some of them came to be developed, I mean, uh, but we can leave that for another day, with the exception, I mean, of um, the... Um, the one for the MPO's um, Vision Zero, I mean, we're getting like uh, 9.3 million I mean, to demonstrate activities I mean, um, relating to uh, safe streets for all. I mean, and I'm just wondering if anyone here can speak to some of the ideas that we might have I mean, um, for those demonstration projects. I know this is putting folks on the spot, so if you're not ready to go, that's totally fine. I am a little curious. That's it. Thank you. Hagen's ready to go. Hagen. Not sure I'm totally ready to go, but um, I'll I'll at least stall for a second in case Rebecca is able to sort of jump in and speak again. I'm not sure if she's attending right now because we weren't anticipating talking about this. Um, but um, Rebecca on our side, Rebecca Morgan, our director of projects and partnerships on our team has been leading um, sort of the, the both of these grant initiatives. And this would be really be building on the planning work that we're doing for, with the first grant that we received to develop the Vision Zero Action Plan. And then implementing some of those strategies in a demonstration fashion with some of the cities and towns. And so what I would love to do is actually have her come back pretty soon to talk to you a little bit more about what those might look like. Um, I know we're going to have a bit of an update as well at the annual meeting, but that will be relatively brief and we can always do a more engaged conversation, but it looks like I stalled long enough and Rebecca okay. is here. So I'll okay, let her speak up a little more if you don't mind. Go ahead, Rebecca. Great, thank you, Tegan, and thanks for the question, Len. Um, there's, I can certainly send you uh, more information on this, but just to give you a, a general sense for the kinds of projects that we're considering for this, it's a combination of demonstration projects so thinking about quick build implementations where we do some, um, you know, temporary speed bumps or daylighting at intersections and do some data collection, and those result would then feed into the regional plan. So testing some of the um, improvements that we are outlining in the safety action plan under our existing grant. And the other is supplemental planning projects. So working with cities and towns that want to develop a vision zero task force or want some safe system training or want to do some education campaigns. So there's a variety of types of strategies that we've put forward. And it's a pretty large size grant. We're looking to work in partnership with cities and towns and I have more information uh, that I could certainly talk to you about in a one-on-one -on -one, or as Tegan recommended, maybe come back and share a bit more of what we're thinking about for this grant. 
Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Kagan. Matt Moran. Uh, good morning again, Mr. Chair. And um, you know, I'll just echo what Eric and others have said. It's a really impressive list of projects. I think we're really excited to see all the federal and grant money coming into the Boston region. So thanks, everyone, for your efforts there uh, and for all of your hard work. Uh, it's just a question on the North Washington, uh, uh, North Station drawbridge. It, it sounded like the uh, what Mr. Reeker said earlier in the conversation um, indicated that there might have been uh, some additional meetings and some additional feedback that was received uh, and communicated to the city of Cambridge from the MBTA about how the permitting process was going. Um, it sounds like there might have been a little bit of confusion uh, hearing what uh, Laura Gilmore said um, as far as how those two items line up. The City of Boston had asked for a presentation or some additional clarification about this issue in the April meeting and then the June meeting. I don't think we've quite gotten that. So I'm wondering, would it be possible to have a broader conversation either here at the MPO or um, sort of at a breakout session to talk through some of the intricacies around this pedestrian bridge connection. Because I think we're, we consider it important for the region, whether it's located as a part of the bridge um, or a, a sort of secondary structure. I don't think we're pretty agnostic, but I think given that it was a big day our commitments, I think we see this as an important item to advance in the near future. So I, I think it's important just for the region for us to have that conversation. So more detail. Thanks, Matt. Laura? Yeah, um, Matt, hearing you on that, um, I, and I apologize if there was a request made that we had not responded to. Um, I'm happy to work you know, either through the MPO staff or separately to set up a conversation. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Any other, any other questions at this time? Seeing none, can I get a motion and a second to release this amendment for a 21-day public review process? And please state your name for the record when making the motion. Eric Barassa. Uh, Eric Barassa, I'll make a motion to release uh, this TIP amendment for public review and comment. Thank you. Lynn Diggins. Diggins, we'll second the motion. Thank you. Motion has been made and seconded. Please call the roll. David Moeller. Yes. John Bouchard. John Bouchard, yes. John Romano. John Romano, yes. Laura Gilmore. Yes. Sarah Lee. Sarah Lee, yes. Eric Barassa. Eric Barassa, yes. Hannah Switlikowski. Hannah Switlikowski, yes. Len Diggins. Sorry about that. Dig is yes. Uh, not a problem. Thank you. Uh, next is Matt Moran. Matt Moran, yes. And Jen Rowe. Jen Rowe, yes. Eric Molinari. Eric Molinari, yes. You, David Cozes. David Cozes, yes. John Alessi. John Alessi, yes. Aaron Shute. Aaron Shute, yes. Uh, Tom Bent. Tom Bent, yes. Christine Guichard. Christine Guichard, yes. Dennis Giambetti. Dennis Giambetti, yes. Darlene Wynn. Darlene Wynn, yes. Mysterio. Mysterio, yes. And Tom O'Rourke. Tom O'Rourke, yes. Thank you. This motion carries back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Dave. Next item on the agenda is operations plan update. David Hong and Nair McGuire, whenever you guys are ready. Thank you. Um, I'm Dave Hong manager of MPO activities. And today we'll be asking for a vote to approve the operations plan as presented uh, and um, reviewed the last MPO meeting, October 10th. If we go to the next slide. And then the next. 
The following is an overview of revisions as presented on October the 10th. From January onward, the MOU update committee and staff worked to incorporate elements previously in the memorandum of understanding document, then inserted additional text to clarify certain sections, added uh, a board development section, and added an information sharing section between uh, agencies. Next slide. Since our last MPO board meeting, we did not receive additional comments. Staff again thank the MOU update committee um, and will request a motion to approve the operations plan. Thank you and turn back to the chair. Any questions or comments for Dave or Aaron? Seeing and hearing none, can I get a motion in a second to approve the operations plan as presented today? Jen Rowe. It's Jen Rowe, and I'd like to motion to approve the operations plan as presented today. Thank you, Eric Barassa. Now, second that motion, Eric Barassa. Thank you. Motion have been made and seconded. Please call the roll. Thank you. David Moeller. Yes. John Bouchard. John Bouchard, yes. John Romano. John Romano, yes. Laura Gilmore. Laura Gilmore, yes. Sarah Lee. Sarah Lee, yes. Eric Barassa. Eric Barassa, yes. Anna Switlikowski. Hannah Switlikowski, yes. Len Diggins. Please, yes. Jen, Jen Rowe. Jen Rowe, yes. Matt Moran. Matt Moran, yes. Eric Molinari. Eric Molinari, yes. David Kozis. David Kozis, yes. Donna Lessie. On Alessi, yes. Aaron Shoot. Aaron Shoot, yes. Tom Bent. Tom Bent, yes. Kristen Guichard. Kristen Guichard, yes. Dennis Giambetti. Dennis Giambetti, yes. Darlene Wynn. Darlene Wynn, yes. Christy Orio. Christy Orio, yes. And Tom O'Rourke. Tom O'Rourke, yes. Thank you. That motion also carries, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is a word scope for blue bikes and MBTA connections. Tanner Bonner. Good morning, everyone. I'm Tanner Bonner, and I'm a data analyst on the MPO staff. I'm here to present the work scope for the blue bikes and MBTA connections UPWP funded discrete study. The cost is about $60,000, and it'll take about 11 months to complete. Just for some background, BikeShare offers a lot of utility for connecting with public transit and serving multimodal trips in the Boston region. It can address what's known as the first and last mile problem, which makes it easier for some riders to access transit stations and complete their trips efficiently without a car. It can also substitute for transit for trips that may otherwise take longer or be less convenient. We recently conducted a literature review and an exploratory analysis to develop a baseline understanding of the relationships between bike share and transit. While we found that a great majority of existing blue bike stations are near at least one MBTA stop, there are still gaps in connectivity and many factors left unexplored. By using additional data, tools, and methodologies informed by stakeholder input, we'll build on this work to analyze where blue bikes and the MBTA allow for complementary and competitive trips and how rider behavior reflects available opportunities. In the end, we'll create a report for this work and communicate the results to the board. I'm happy to answer any questions, but otherwise at this time, I'd like to ask that the board please vote to approve the scope. And I'd now like to turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Tanner. Any questions for Tanner? Lynn Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm going to be happy to support this. Um, uh, first, a couple of quick questions. You know, uh, I, uh, I I saw that you're going to use the GitHub um, repository, which is cool. I mean, uh, uh, so is that going to be publicly available? That is the intention, yes. 
Excellent. Very nice. Very, very, very nice. I mean, and, and I'll, I also, in reading it, I see that there may be some potential other touch points, me for um, you to tell us what you're planning on doing. You know, so will those be, are you planning on coming back to the board or will you maybe you know, indicate me um, what you're planning on doing in the GitHub, in the repository? The GitHub repository will be used to show what analysis methods and data that we use that we can publicly publish. Um, and we would definitely like to come back to the board to present the results um, once the report is complete. Yeah, it's more about maybe um, us inputting on, on the, the things to look at. Uh, uh, that's why I was wondering if you're planning on coming back to the board. And, and, and maybe corollary, a corollary question is that I noticed you know, on your timeline that you're going to be conducting analysis while you're also um, in the planning and preparation for analysis. And so can you tell us maybe a little bit of what, what analysis you're going to be doing uh, while you're still preparing and planning? Yeah, absolutely. So we've done a lot of groundwork um, at the moment to be able to uh, determine reachability of stations to MBTA access points. Um, and there are some clear uh, directions there that we can continue work on. Um, but there are also some other points that we would like to understand a bit more, such as MBTA service characteristics and uh, bicycle infrastructure near these connection points that we think engagement with stakeholders and taking time among staff to think through the best methodology will be really beneficial to those portions of the analysis. Great. Well, thank you. Anytime you can toss out that link to the GitHub repository, I appreciate it. Thanks again. Any other questions for Tanner? Lord Gilmore. No questions. I will just say that uh, the MBTA is very excited about this scope of work. Um, the connection between Blue Bikes and our MBTA system, I think, is an important one for us to continue to understand and to build as many of our uh, riders access MBTA, the MBTA system using either walking or biking. Thank you, Laura. You want to go ahead and make the motion to approve this work scope? Sure. I will make the motion to approve this work scope. Thank you, Laura. Len Diggins. I'm very happy to second it. Thanks. Thank you. Motion has been made and seconded. Please call the roll. Absolutely. Starting with David Muller. Yes. John Bouchard. John Bouchard, yes. Thank you. Uh, John Romano. John Romano, yes. Laura Gilmore. Yes. Uh, Sarah Lee. Sarah Lee, yes. Eric Barasa. Eric Barasa, yes. Hannah Switlikowski. Hannah Switlikowski, yes. Len Diggins. Diggins, yes. Jen Rowe. Jen Rowe, yes. Matt Moran. Matt Moran, yes. Eric Molinari. Eric Molinari, yes. David Kozis. David Kozis, yes. John Alessi. John Alessi, yes. Aaron Shute. Aaron Shute, yes. Tom Bent. Tom Bent, yes. Kristen Guichard. Kristen Guichard, yes. Dennis Giambetti. Dennis Giambetti, yes. Darlene Nguyen. Darlene Nguyen, yes. Thank you. Chris Diario. Chris Diario, yes. And Tom O'Rourke. Tom O'Rourke, yes. Motion carries. We're back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Tanner. Next item on the agenda is a work scope for exploring the potential for using cargo e bikes for first and last mile freight deliveries. Sharvanti, whenever you're ready. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Shanti Gopalan Narayanan, and I'm the Freight Planning Program Manager at the MPO's Multimodal Planning and Design Team. I would like to present the scope of work for UPWP study titled Exploring the Potential for Using Cargo E-Bikes for First and Last Mile Freight Deliveries. This project number 13821 has a budget of $40,000 and is funded through UPWP Discrete Study. Uh, and is scheduled to be completed within 10 months of the project commencement. Next slide, please. 
This study builds on ongoing efforts in freight decarbonization, complementing the federal fiscal year 2024 UPWP study on uh, decarbonization strategies within the freight and logistics sector. The city of Boston is actively piloting a cargo e-bike delivery program called uh, Boston Delivers, aimed at uh, supporting local businesses in Alston and nearby areas. Additionally, uh, the Urban Freight Lab in Seattle has been researching this topic extensively and has recently published findings in Biking the Goods. Leveraging these efforts, MPO staff will investigate the characteristics of cargo e-bikes and their potential for first and last mile deliveries throughout the Boston metropolitan area. We will also explore the role of hubs within the regional transportation system. The study aims to provide valuable insights into effective strategies for decarbonizing the freight sector. Next slide, please. The study will include a literature review that looks into some past ongoing and planned cargo e-bike programs, relevant case studies, interview experts in the topic to understand challenges and opportunities, and develop recommendations, best practices, and key considerations for implementing cargo e-bikes and establishing freight hubs. Next slide, please. As part of the study, we expect to deliver a summary of the literature review and case studies, takeaways from expert interviews, and recommendations uh, and best practices. These will be compiled into a memorandum and will be presented to the MPO board upon project completion. I thank everybody for this opportunity to present the scope and I request a O to approve this work scope. I'm happy to take any questions, but I will now return it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Sravanti. Any questions? Lynn Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I'll, I'll, once again, I'll be happy to support the study. You know, and I just want to suggest me that uh, when you look into it, that you also take into account um, the um, <laughs> results that were um, um, presented or at least discovered, you know, by, uh, I'm blanking out his name, I'm sorry, you know, the guy who presented on the um, parking in, in the bike lanes, you know, and so he had noticed that, you know, I, I think he had some conclusions regarding e-cargo um, bikes, and so uh, less if we can incorporate me that concern, you know, into this study, um, do so, because I think, uh, it, you know, it can make a difference. That's it. Thank you. Eric Barassa. Yeah, just also wanted to uh, echo support for this. And um, MAPC, we've been helping um, the city of Boston with, with their pilot, with uh, helping to evaluate it, and also um, helping to promote it with other municipalities. So definitely want to foster you know, good, good coordination there and uh, look forward to um, seeing this work and, and highlighting um, you know, the success of seeing more of these small deliveries be, um, you know, shifted to, to e-cargo bike um, is uh, is great. Thank you, Eric. Jen Rowe. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, jumping on a similar train of thought, I uh, really appreciate this work scope um, and especially uh, Shavanti, Renak, and Ethan for joining uh, some of our planners and engineers in the streets cabinet for a spirited conversation around uh, or all topics urban freight, including uh, this scope um, and graciously receiving some of our questions and suggestions. Uh, we're excited to see this move forward and look forward to uh, yeah, learning more as the, as the report uh, comes out. And I also know that uh, there's um, one can look forward to this kind of report, report on the Boston program as it wraps up. And I also believe MAPC is preparing uh, some uh, information about uh, analysis as well. So um, it's really great to see uh, a growing body of uh, work around this topic. Excellent. Tom Ben. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm not sure if this would be part of the study or not, but um, one of the uh, things that we've noticed, and I think I read something recently in the uh, Boston Globe about the, uh, as bike lanes become more and more used, which which is all a good thing, there's a concern about what should be in the bike lane and what shouldn't be. Um, you have, you know, the unregistered, unlicensed motor scooters that can go pretty fast. Uh, you know, we see them in the bike lanes. We have bicycles, obviously, e-bikes. 
you have uh, the uh, the uh, like motorized skateboards. I think I don't remember what they call those. So there's a lot of different things going on in those bike lanes, and I think they're getting very congested. And I know talking with some of the bicyclists, they're concerned with uh, e-bikes in the bike lanes with the speed that they can go, and you know, obviously the motor scooters. So I don't know if this would be part of your study or if it would be maybe a new study that the UPWP would want to look at. Sure, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so I just want to quickly thank Len, Eric, and Jen, and uh, just want to quickly respond to uh, questions that I've received so far. So Len, uh, Kyle was the one who presented on parking in bike lanes, and we both will be working in the study, so we'll be collaborating uh, to work on the study. So, and yes, we will also look at the recommendations that were made as part of bike a parking in bike lane study. So thank you for your question, Len. Um, thank you, Eric and Jen. Uh, I really appreciate your support. Um, and Tom, um, thank you for your question. And uh, actually, thank you for bringing it up. Uh, so um, as part of the scope, we do uh, plan to look into the vehicle sizes. Uh, so I hope that uh, we'll be able to cover uh, some of what you just uh, talked in as part of the study. So that is uh, okay plan as part of the scope. Um, but I'm not sure how, to what extent we will be able to like, um, uh, ex, uh, like, you know, uh, mention what is allowed versus not allowed, because I think that really depends on policy, but we will definitely come up with recommendations on vehicle sizes uh, and whether they can be um, allowed in parking, uh, sorry, by things or not. I hope that answers your question. Great. Yep. Thank you. Any other Thank questions? You. Seeing none, can we get a motion and a second to approve this work scope as presented today? And please state your name for the record when making the motion. Tom Bent. Uh, I'll make a motion to uh, approve this work scrub, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Eric Barassa. I'll second the motion. Thank you. Motion has been made and seconded. Please call the roll. For sure. Uh, David Moeller. Yes. John Bouchard. John Bouchard, yes. John Romano. John Romano, yes. Laura Gilmore. Laura Gilmore, yes. Sara Lee. Sara Lee, yes. Eric Barassa. Eric Barassa, yes. Anna Switlikowski. Anna Switlikowski, yes. Len Diggins. Diggins, yes. Jen Rowe. Jen Rowe, yes. Matt Moran. Matt Moran, yes. Eric Molinari. Eric Molinari, yes. David Kozis. David Kozis, yes. Don Alessi. Don Alessi, yes. Aaron Shute. Aaron Shute, yes. Tom Bent. Tom Bent, yes. Christine Guichard. Christine Guichard, yes. Dennis Giambetti. Dennis Giambetti, yes. Darlene Wynn. Darlene Wynn, yes. Christy Ario. Christy Ario, yes. <clears throat> and Tom O'Rourke. Tom O'Rourke, yes. Motion carries. Back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, and thank, thank you, Shervanti. Next item on the agenda is the NPO elections update. Eric Barassa. Great. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so just as a reminder, um, we have uh, four seats that are up for election this year. We have the uh, Three Rivers Interlocal Council seat, the TRIC seat, which the town of Norwood is running for unopposed. We have the North Suburban Planning Council seat, which the town of Burlington is running for unopposed. We have the at-large town seat, which the town of Arlington is running unopposed. And then we have the at-large city seat, which is a competitive race. We have the city of Newton and the city of Chelsea running for that seat. Last week, um, uh, MPO uh, staff sponsored a great um, uh, a candidates forum with uh, Mayor uh, Fuller and city manager Maltez. Um, that um, recording has, that, that uh, candidates form was recorded. The recording has been sent out um, to uh, all the um, uh, uh, tip contacts, as well as the municipal um, chief executive officials. Um, 
feel free to contact uh, Dave or myself or Hannah if um, if you'd like to, to get a link to that recording. Um, we also have the ballots are posted. They've been uh, sent out. Um, and um, again, if you uh, need access to the ballot, uh, feel free to contact me. It's, it's an electronic ballot. We've had many of the ballots be submitted. We will do um, another round of uh, outreach over the next week. The deadline for submitting ballots is um, November 6th. Um, so we will send out another reminder about that, but uh, we need folks to um, vote by November 6th. And the folks who vote in cities, it is the mayor or the city manager. And in towns, it is the chair of the select board. Um, so again, we will send out another reminder to people. The MPO staff will send out another reminder, I think, next week, um, along with a link to the recording. But um, really happy that there's um, you know interest in the at-large city seat. And um, that is my update. And I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Eric. Any questions for Eric? Seeing none. So the the final the final the, the votes have to be in by the six, and then we will seat the if, seat the winners at the fourteenth. Correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Eric. Next item on the agenda is vice chair nominations. And taking correct me if I'm wrong, but the, we're going to take nominations today, and then we will actually vote on the fourteenth. Is that true? Correct. Okay. So today's purpose is to solicit nominations for vice chair. Is there anyone who would like to nominate someone for vice chair? If so please raise your hand and we will call on you. Tom Pint. Mr. Chair, I would like to uh, present uh, Eric Barasa as vice chair, once again for MA, uh, from MAPC to be vice chair of the MPO. Excellent, and for the record, we're nominating MAPC well, we all love oh, Eric right. nominating MAPC. So mm -hmm. thank you, Tom. Is there a second? Leonard Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll be happy to second. And, and, uh, and if I may can I ask a question, maybe if you are the vice chair, and that is I mean, about how long do you think it takes to get up to speed uh, to be an effective vice chair? Decades. Decades. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm because, no, no, because sorry, I mean, you, you can answer. Con you're actually the vice con chair. Continuity is important and good, you know. Uh, but also, I was just wondering how long it might take you to get someone prepared, you know, to 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 you know, to work in that position, you know, and, and what we should maybe expect to help that person, you know, in order so that if Eric voluntarily or involuntarily has a step down, someone would be in a position, you know, to fill that seat. That's it. That's why I asked. Thank you. All right. And, and Eric, Eric can take and have both raise their hands and you can ignore my, my comment. <laughs> Eric? Uh, well, for, first, I want to say thank you very much um, to Tom uh, and, and Len. Thank you for the nomination. Um, we graciously, you know, accept um, where we, we enjoy playing the role of the vice chair, helping um, to, uh, you know, set the agendas and, and listening to what uh, board members are interested in, um, we're we're happy to continue, you know, to play that role. Um, I think it, you know, I I I think that um, you know having a few years of experience is 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 fine. If you know if, if there are folks in the future that want to you know play this role, you know, we're always happy to have a conversation. But um, we certainly enjoy playing the role, and um, definitely want to you know look to foster, you know, regionalism and um, and the values that we've, you know, identified at the MPO. So again, th thank you. Really, we really appreciate the, the support and we're happy to keep uh, playing that role. Okay, again. Thanks. Um, I can also just share my experience from uh, learning from other MPOs as well, who do have um, chairs and vice chairs that rotate more frequently. And that's that I agree that some years of experience is very, very helpful, extremely helpful. That said, that is also what we're here to, to be as staff, to support anybody stepping into roles on the MPO, just like new board members, we would work to support anybody to get up to speed. Um, in this case, with this nomination, that's obviously not at all necessary, but we're always here um, to be able to provide that support. That's how we ensure continuity. <laughs> Thank you, Tegan. Now to, now to finish my job in this process, are there any other nominations at this time? Seeing none. I will announce the nominations closed and we will I take a vote at the next meeting, but I, I assume it won't be a, a difficult vote. 
Uh, thank you, Eric, for, for agreeing to serve yet again. It's it's actually, it, you know, it's not an easy job and you do it really well. Next item on the agenda is the solicitation of new committee members. Taking this issue? Oh, wait, Jay Monty has his hand up. Jay? Jay's trying to unmute. Oh, there there you go. Go. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I don't know if this is my item for the CMP or not, and I apologize I didn't uh, enter your chat. I was my chat's disabled for some reason, but uh, this is my item. I'm happy to happy to take it. If not, somebody else can, can grab it. You take it, Jay. All right, sweet. <laughs> um, so I, the the uh, purpose of this item is to discuss. We have a vacancy on the congestion management committee, um, and um, first I want to say uh, we have a new um, manager at CTPS for this committee. Uh, Priyanka uh, Chapakar, she's doing a fantastic job, um, really, really taking this committee to a new level. I'm really excited about that. Um, really looking at it from a lens of integrating it with our long range transportation plan and looking at it beyond just, you know, vehicular congestion, but really looking at our transit, our bike, our ped, and how this really all um, works, it works into our long range plan. Um, so right now we have our, our members, uh, Everett, myself uh, being the chair, uh, City of Boston, uh, the three, three Rivers Interlocal Council, uh, MBT Advisory Board, uh, RTAC, uh, MassDOT Highway, Massport, and we have one vacant seat. Um, so we'd love to have uh, another member on the committee. And um, if you're interested, please reach out to myself or Priyanka. We're happy, happy to chat more about um, our plans for the coming months. Um, but like I said, really excited about um, Priyanka's work and CTBS's work on this. And I hope uh, somebody will step up. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Are there any other committee chairs who would like to pitch vacancies or request new members? Oh, I see a bunch. Derek Cravat. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, I was asked to give a quick overview of the Unified Planning Work Program Committee as well. Um, and just explain the process if folks are interested in joining. Uh, we are always um, happy to work with folks to consider membership. Um, but just as an overview, the UPWP committee um, meets about quarterly um, with more meetings happening during the development of each fiscal year's uh, ne next fiscal year's uh, UPWP. So usually between January and um, sort of May timeframe. Um, but we deliberate on the development um, and recommend um, studies that should be included in the work program. Um, so the two studies that were actually on this agenda for Blue Bikes MBTA connections and exploring uh, e-bikes for first and last mile freight deliveries were studies that came out of um, the UPWP, of course, and those were studies that were discussed at the UPWP committee. Um, so what happens each year is uh, staff solicits uh, study ideas from MPO members and uh, other stakeholders in the region, and then we discuss and make recommendations as the UPWP committee. So it's a really, uh, you know, it's a it's a exciting exchange of ideas that happens at these committee meetings. We talk a lot about what would add value uh, for the MPO's work program um, and and communities within the region. So it's a great group and a lot of great ideas exchanged uh, during these meetings. Um, with respect to current members, uh, it's myself as the chair from MassDOT as a member. Uh, there's also uh, members from MBTA Advisory Board, the City of Boston, City of Newton, um, and then others are Metro West Regional Collaborative, the MAPC, um, RTAC, SWAP, uh, Intercore Committee, and the TRIC subregion as well. Um, and I've been told that if anyone is interested in um, requesting to be a member, um, you should contact me um, by October 31st. And I will put my email address in the chat um, so folks have it. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. Jane Rowe. And so in order of the certification documents, um, so you all heard a little bit from me about the um, tipper tip uh, process engagement and readiness committee um, in turn my the chair's report. Uh, this past year, the board um, deputized tipper with reviewing the annual tip development process with an eye for potential improvements. Uh, we also provide a forum for board members, project proponents, and other stakeholders uh, seeking to better understand project developments, uh, including cost and readiness changes. Uh, we meet throughout the year as needed uh, with more frequent meetings in the winter and spring uh, to complement the kind of busier periods of tip development. 
and we typically meet on Thursdays at 1 p.m. Uh, City of Boston chairs the Tipper Committee, and the membership also includes uh, MassDOT with two seats, the Regional Transportation Advisory Council, Core Committee, Metro West Regional Collaborative, Minuteman Advisory Council on Interlocal Coordination, Southwest Advisory Planning Committee, Town of Arlington, and Town of Brookline. Um, it's been really great working with this group, uh, and I hope all the existing members that can choose to continue uh, for the upcoming fiscal year. Um, that said, of course, if you folks truly don't have the capacity to devote to the committee, we uh, it would be helpful to know that and um, certainly no hard feelings. Um, and if uh, any members that are not currently on the committee um, are excited about shaping the process for TIP development, um, please do reach out to Ethan, Derek, and myself, um, and I'll uh, put our emails in the chat. Yeah. Hannah Spudelkowski. Hi, everyone. I'm actually speaking on behalf of my boss, Brian Kane, who chairs the ANF committee. Um, he wasn't able to be here today because the MBTA board of directors is currently meeting at the exact same time. Um, just personally, I would put a plug in. It would be great not to have MPO meetings at the exact same time as MBTA board. Um, anyway, the ANF committee reviews and deliberates all administrative and finance members, which come before the board, which includes reviewing the operating budget, quarterly updates, and any other matters which are requested by this MPO board related to the administration or finance of the Boston region, MPO, and its staff. Um, the committee typically meets quarterly, usually on Thursdays at 9 a.m. before board meetings. The chair is my boss, Brian Kane of the MBTA Advisory Board. And currently, ANF members consist of the Advisory Board, um, Metro West Regional Collaborative, MassDOT, uh, MAPC, Regional Transportation Advisory Council, and the City of Boston. Any board members who are interested in volunteering, um, you can definitely reach out to Brian Kane. I will put his email into the chat, and I um, appreciate um, the time this morning. Thank you, Hannah. Megan Pike, you want to wrap it up for us? Exactly. Um, thanks for, for all the committee chairs um, or representatives of the chairs to for giving a bit of an overview about the committees. Um, the, the next steps we have here is to just make sure that everybody knows here as a board member, you're welcome to be on these committees. Please do share your interest with the relevant committee chair by October 31st. Um, and then what we'll do is develop slates of committee membership to then be reviewed and um, approved at the November 14th annual meeting. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting one detail there. I apologize, but but that's the idea. Oh, also the other detail I'm forgetting is that any we will also invite any new members of the MPO board. We already know that the RTA revolving seat, rotating seat is gonna be added, um, as well as depending on the outcomes of the elections, any new members will also be invited to join at least one of these committees um, within a, a short period of time after them starting their tenure. Thank you. Tegan, any questions from the members of, of any of the chairs or Tegan? Seeing that, I would encourage you, if you're interested, to please volunteer. These committees are very important to all of us, and they all do a really good job. Next item is member items. Are there any? Seeing none, can we get a motion and a second to adjourn? And please state your name for the record when making the motion. Tom Bent. Mr. Chair, Tom Bent. Uh, I make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Jen Rowe. Oh, I second that motion. Thank you. Motion has been made and seconded without objection. We are adjourned. Thank you all very much.